that software is. Let's see, we're going to go over here. You want your. Let's see, we want. Remember where this is? Yes. You want MPLAB Sim, and that's for the simulator. So you're going to che check that as your debug tool. You'll get a debug toolbar. Okay. And then now we're going to go down to your debugger and you want to go to stimulus because you're going to want to set up a stimulus workbook. So you're going to go to new workbook and you get this little guy. And this is going to be your stimulus workbook. Now for us, we've got two different uh, inputs and outputs. Okay. So, or yeah, two sets of inputs and outputs. Now, what you're going to want to watch, or basically stimulate your device, is you're going to want to give these these different reactions. What types of you know these two inputs is what you're wanting to stimulate your your pick with. So, what you're going to want to do is you come up to this asynchronous pin. You're going to choose your pin. So, our two uh, switches reside on A0 and A1. So, you're going to want A0 for one of them. Uh, your action right now will set those set those high for right now because that's what our pull-up resistor will do. So then we want we also want A1. We're gonna set that high. Okay. Whoops, not pulse high, set high. Now you have to come on over to your pin slash register actions because you have to set at what time do these go high and go low. So what I do is I just set it time zero. Like the, the instant I apply the stimulus, I, I like to run the code. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. You come over here and you have to add your signals. Same deal goes. You need, uh, here's all your different pins and everything. Now make sure you don't mistake this. A lot of people, you'll a lot of times you'll see AN0 and you'll think, oh, it's A0 real quick. Well, actually that's your analog zero. These are actually all the, these are the, eight pins on the analog to digital converter so you want the ones that have the R in front of them so you come on down and see now you see RA0 RA1 so make sure make sure you get these so we want to add that one we want to add that one the R, RA0 the A0 and the A1 see add those in so now we have both of those so now in binary what you want to set them to so we want to set them to a logic one basically Want those to be logic one. That also corresponds with this back in here. You're setting setting them high. Your high corresponds with what uh, logic value you have here. Now all you do is you just hit apply. See that says stimulus applied successfully, and it actions after zero cycles. So and that's your time. So now you can perform a debug. So like for example, you can just double click or come up here and hit the insert breakpoint button I just like to double click and it puts your breakpoint in so now you can now you can debug so right now everything's set to a high so we should basically skip over and go to this else statement because we're 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 not going to be a zero we're always going to be a high so we should hit both these else statements when we when we debug so let's go let's we're going to break and we're going to uh, step over and see we just we just now jumped to the else statement and then the next one we're going to go to that if statement and then boom it jumps to the to the else because this isn't true and of course if we just keep going um, it's going to just do that forever because of the infinite loop so it always jumped there now if we come back while we're broken into the code we come back to our stimulus and we set these both low um, well, in fact, here I'll just set one low and we'll set another one high. Come back here and make sure you change your logic value. It does not work if you don't change your logic value. It, everything has to correspond. And then stimulus applied successfully. So now we'll come back and we should see that switch one is the one that we, we changed. So we should see uh, us go into the if statement when we go through. So we go in, boom, see, it goes straight to the output high and then skips the else statement and goes down to the next if. Now, since we haven't set this one to zero, it's going to skip that one and keep going. Now see, goes to the first one, skips over the else, goes to the second one. And then, same, similarly, if I come back here and set this one low, come over here, set this to zero, 
and apply those settings. Now we can come back. Step over. We'll go to the first if statement. Skip over the else. Now the second one now will be zero. And so, boom, it goes to goes to outputting a high, and skips over the else, and goes back. So, this is basically how you can, uh, if you're doing very basic stuff, like like I said, just flipping bits high and low, <coughs> excuse me, and things like that. You can use this stimulus uh, to mess to do um, some simple debugs on your on your system before actually programming a chip and actually watching it do its thing. So and then see here so we set them both back to high so it's going to output the lows. Very very simple. There's also some other advanced features you can do um, you can define triggers and actually trigger different things uh, happen. You can do clock stimuluses, register injections, register traces. Um, I, I haven't really experimented too much with this other uh, things, but by all means, uh, feel free to go through the user's guide on Microchip's website and uh, look at how to do more advanced features with this uh, stimulus and the MPLAB SIM uh, debugger tool. Um, but most of the time, I just use I use these, or I do like I talked in the in the lesson on programming a chip, uh, use an ICD, an in circuit uh, debugger. Uh, you can just plug into your circuit while it's running and then you can just you can do your debugs and whatnot that way but this one's nice because it's free it comes free with uh, MPLAB IDE which is also free on Microchip's website so it actually it actually does help out so it helps with like I said the very simpler deals if you're just reading pins high and low reading stuff in that way and uh, setting different other pins high or low accordingly or um, maybe performing different calculations or whatnot based on what uh, input pins are doing. This is a the stimulus uh, workbooks are a very very helpful tool for doing that. So um, that pretty much concludes it. Um, program very simple, a brief uh, overview back through. We got the include statement. We've got our config register set. Uh, we didn't use any delay, so really we probably didn't need this. But I just I like to get used to including it because when you forget it, it you know. It makes your, it causes errors, and when you use delays, and, and you don't know why, so I like to just include it just in case. Just in case, you never know when you want to put a delay in. Um, we're using our define statements to define our pins. Um, that way, it makes our code flow a little easier to read. You can see exactly what what it's doing without having to write a whole bunch of comments about you know with, with that this is an LED and these are sw you know these are switches that we're checking and whatnot makes your life easier. Set your tri-state registers. Make sure, make sure, make sure to always set your tri-state registers. Um, and then even then, even after you set your tri-state registers of which is input and output, you always make sure and drive your pins um, higher or lower. Basically initialize your output pins. You always want to initialize those to some value just because uh, especially if you're going to do some uh, checking or you know checking on uh, different pins or checking on anything before you actually and then based on what they're doing you then you're going to output you always want to make sure you and drive those to whatever state you want them to be because if you're connecting any other peripheral device or something that maybe is sensitive to that uh, it could cause it to be unstable because those those pins float and when we start doing a lot of uh, serialing and uh, talking through the RS-232 protocol uh, when you have maybe multiple chips uh, that are all communicating through our, the RS-232 interface you're using software uh, UART which is the um, serial uh, hardware uh, protocol that you use um, that causes uh, that causes a lot of trouble with it uh, when the pins float like that so you always want to make sure and initialize initialize your stuff either high or low depending on what kind of you know what logic you're wanting to use and then basically the input statement returns a zero or one based on what the pin is doing whether the pin is driven high or driven low uh, through either a pull up or pull down resistor network or a switch being pressed or what have you. Uh, and then just like regular C programming, you, know, you put an exclamation mark is a, is a not. And then the output high and output low statements. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And then the stimulus workbook. Make sure you set both these to the pin register actions and the asynchronous uh, match each other. And both ones here 
and both high here or both low or low and high but make sure that the binary matches the the high your logic matches what you're doing and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it for this tutorial uh, hope you hope you enjoyed it and we'll look forward to producing more of these thank you very much